All right, guys, I'm Captain Randall Shaw, and today I'm going to talk tarpon with you. We're going to go over gear, tactics, different ways we like to target tarpon. So first thing I'm going to go over with you is going to be the rod I use. Okay, I have two of them sitting right here to go over some stuff with y'all. These are Reapers. They buy a Reaper rod. Okay, this is their seven foot six. I also have their eight foot. We go with their medium heavies, uh, extra fast, and everything else is standard by Reaper Rod. Their grips, they make all kind of custom stuff, but these are all fully standard. Okay, the reels that I use are going to be these. If you want a really go to reel, um, that's just going to be mid price point, things like that. Penn also makes good ones too, and, and there's a couple other companies out there. Um, but this is a Saragossa, okay? This is a 6,000 Saragossa, okay? Uh, it's got 50 pound braid on it. Uh, I don't use an eight strand braid, but you know, I recommend it these days. Um, I probably will upgrade some of these to eight strand, but this is a four strand Power Pro 50 pound uh, braid line, okay? So that's going to be the rod and the reels I'm going to use. I'm going to use 6,000s, you know, I really don't use 8,000s, 6,000s, 5,000s, and then I'm going to use these Reaper rods. These Reaper rods have proven to me that they can do everything from, from bass to goliath groupers. I mean, you name it, tuna, everything. We've caught them on every different rod they make, um, and they last. So uh, I'll put the link below to reach out to Austin with Reaper rods and uh, get your hands on one of these Reaper rods. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is where we fish for tarpon. Okay, We fish anywhere from bays to passes. Um, and even up on the flats uh, in our local area here, home of Sasso. Okay, I fish primarily on the west coast of Florida, um, but I, I think these tactics work all over because I grew up fishing in Louisiana and we used to go out to the Berry Islands and catch some of these tarp in the same way. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you, um, because I used it in Louisiana too, uh, it's been effective everywhere along the Gulf Coast, um, is what we call the DOA Bait Buster. Okay, and I've done other that's it right there. Comes in multiple colors. Okay. I've done other videos on this. You can check back and you'll see it. Um, hopefully it'll be up in, in the links below and stuff like that. We'll put it in the comments, but we've done videos at ICAST with the OA. This bait buster is deadly for tarpon and cobia. Okay. It's been the most, two most effective fish for me on this bait have been tarpon and cobia. The way we fish it is straight cast out, let it sink for a little while. If you're in 10, 12 feet of water in a bay, let it sink and just slow retrieve it back. Okay. This is what I've used up here on the locally on the flats. If I can get this bait in front of a school of fish and just reel it through, I'm going to get eaten. So this is my go-to when it comes to plastics with tarpon. I don't do a ton of plastic fishing with tarpon. I do a lot of live baiting uh, because the season's so short. I want to get as many hookups as I can and, and, and I like live bait uh, matching the hatch. So um, I'll explain the two different ways that I have live baited uh, here up next. Okay, now let's talk live bait, okay? If I'm throwing live bait, there's two main baits I'm gonna throw, okay? I'm gonna go, if I'm fishing like the Skyway or pretty much most of Tampa, uh, I'm gonna go throw the cast net, catch a bunch of big thread fins, and I am literally gonna cut them in threes and put my trolling motor on spot lock and I'm gonna basically build a slick line behind me and I'm gonna let one go on a hook buried into it um, and try and catch them that way. Try and get them into the chum slick behind me and get these tarpon to come up and eat behind me and get them kind of rolling. Uh, a lot of times you will see them back there before they eat, okay? The other live bait that I like to use would be a pass crab, okay? Pass crab is, speaks exactly what I'm telling you if I'm fishing a pass. If I'm fishing the Tampa Pass, if I'm fishing Bow Grand Pass, I'm gonna catch them on a hard falling tide and I'm gonna go scoop crabs and, and that's what I'm gonna bait with. Uh, if I'm baiting crabs, I'm gonna do it two different ways, which I'm about to go over with you. The way we do crabs and the way that we do thread fin. So let's start with crab, okay? If I am fishing for tarpon with pass crabs, there's two different ways I'm gonna fish for them, okay? Uh, one, I won't use a lot of a cork underneath pass crabs. Now it is done, but I don't do it as much, okay? The two ways I do it, and I'm gonna show you on this rig right here. The first way I'm gonna do it is if the fish are pinned down to the bottom. If I'm just seeing them on a machine and I'm in deep water, 20, really 40, 60 feet of water, okay? I'm gonna run like a two ounce weight um, with a, about a, you know, three to four foot, 60 pound fluorocarbon leader, okay? 
60 pound fluorocarbon is going to be my go-to with tarpon. And then I'm going to run a 7-aught or 8-aught trocar hook, okay? Uh, there's other brands too. That's just the ones that I was started with, so I've stuck with them, okay? 7-aught trocar is my go-to. I will run an 8-aught trocar too, okay? That's one way I'm a fisherman. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sink that bait straight to the bottom, okay? When that bait gets to the bottom, I'm going to crank it two or three times and get it right off the bottom uh, to get it from hanging up on the bottom. And I'm going to float drift through the pass. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to hope that I'm going to hook one of those fish that are down there. Okay. That's one way to fish them. Okay. The other way I'm going to fish pass crabs is I'm going to take just a double uni knot, just like I have on this rod. Okay. It's a 60 pound leader. Okay. I'm going to run a 60 pound leader with a double uni knot, which is on the end of this one right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna run about a four or five foot leader. Okay, and on the other end of that one, I'm gonna put a trocar seven knot hook or eight knot hook. I'm gonna hook the crab right up underneath its belly and through its shell and kind of wiggle it through. Don't push too hard, it'll crack the shell. And I am gonna cast that crab as far out as as deep as I am. Okay, so if I'm in 30 foot of water, 40 foot of water, 50 foot of water, I'm gonna try and make about a 50 foot cast. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to cast it and I'm going to never touch my bale. I'm going to throw it out, close my bale, and just sit. And that line's going to sink. And I'm, as it sinks, we're going to take the boat in the pass because you're drifting in the pass, and we're going to drive up towards that line, okay, to where that line gets parallel on the side of the boat. And if anything, I'm going to let out an extra 10, 10 feet of line if I need to. And the reason why we do that is so we know that bait is down there. That bait has lifted the whole water column all the way down. Okay, and we know it's down there and we know we can make our drift. Okay, and I'm gonna put anywhere between a half ounce and three quarter ounce split shot above that hook. Okay, that's one of the ways that I'm gonna fish them. Uh, the other way is if I get into, and I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna drift through the pass just so you know, with the line on the side of the boat, parallel with it, all the way back to the pass and back up to the front. If you watch the guys, you'll see them doing it. The other way I'm gonna do it is if the fish get up shallow into a bay, okay? If, they, if I'm in the pass and they start pushing up into the top of the bay, right on the top edge, not fishing the middle of the bay or anything like that, like we would with, um, you know, with, with, with uh, DOAs or anything like that, uh, which probably could catch them on DOAs like this too. But I'm, if they get up on that top 20 foot, I'm gonna take that split shot off and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cast as far as I can and I'm gonna let that line drift back and I'm gonna keep as little tension on it as possible. Okay, the whole thing behind tarpon fishing is not to move the bait too much okay you want that bait to float with the current at the same speed of the current so when those tarpon are feeding it looks completely natural they go in and they pick it up no two ways about it no instinct turns them off or anything like that okay so you're going to pick up your slack but you don't want to ever really pull that bait you will see that bait take off you will feel that bait take off uh when you're in 20 feet of water there's really no reason for weight uh quarter ounce at most if you really need if you're really windy or something to get the cast out there but that's how you're gonna fish a pass crab, okay? Now, when you're in the bay, I have done it before with other guides to where we'll literally troll two lines with a cork on it with four or five foot of leader with a live thread fin, okay? And it's very effective that way too, while we're throwing the bait busters. We've gone on the front deck and thrown bait busters out the side where we see the fish. And then we have two lines out the back that are on corks that we're kind of just moving around with our trolling motor and those baits are swimming around back there and we're waiting for them to eat them. We have gotten a lot of sharks like that, but you know it does work and it is effective. Okay. Now, if I'm fishing, you know, a bridge or you know Tampa Bay in any which way, really, any of the flats that drop off into the deep channels or anything like that, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to set my trolling motor up. Okay, and I'm going to get on spot lock to where basically I'm, I don't know, we'll say a hundred yards away from. The structure that I'm trying to fish, whether it's the bridge, or whether it's the, uh, you know, a, a flat that drops off into like a 50 foot channel. I got some flats that are 20 foot deep that drop off 50 foot channels, and those fish will sit in those channels. If I'm fishing that way, I'm on spot lock, and I got thread fin. I went and you know basically uh, cast netted a ton of five gallon buckets of thread fin, and I'm gonna jump. Okay, it's a lot of work, but I'm gonna cut them in threes, and you can pre-cut them if you wanted to. I've done that before when it's just me and I have one person fishing, and I'm gonna jump. Okay, and there's two ways that I've been effective in catching the fish while chumming. Okay, I've used a cork with a five foot leader underneath it. Okay, and 
drifted it back to keep it in that top of that water column because those fish are up rolling a lot. If I see them rolling a lot, I want to keep it up. I don't want it going down into that 40, 50 feet and go underneath them. But the most effective way is to chum, bury a hook, seven knot trocar hook into a piece of chum and throw it out with the chum and let it drift back. Okay. I let it drift back all the way back to the structure, 100, 110 yards and go ahead and pull it back in and do it again. Um, it's a very effective way you'll catch other species. We caught some big sharks like with it. We've caught cobia like that. Um, but we've also caught a lot, a lot of tarpon like that. That's originally how I learned how to tarpon fish. Um, those are the ways that I like to fish. So it kind of gives you every scenario of how you can catch them. Same thing if you're going to beach fish. Uh, I don't do a lot of it, but if you're going to beach fish, cork's a good option. Free line is a great option. Those are going to be in your shallower waters. That's going to be your two best options. Okay. Other than that, it's a matter of seeing them, watching your down scan. If you don't have size scan imaging, it's pretty much a must when you're tarpon fishing. If you really want to hook up a lot. Uh, you got to be able to see these fish on the down scan when they're pinned down to the bottom. And a lot of it's going to be a waiting game, waiting on tides, waiting on moons, you know, depending on where you're at in the day. Uh, but I hope these tips helped you, and we will go more in depth to more detailed stuff on tarpon. But this is the basics on how to fish tarpon with live bait and start fishing them with lures. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Give us a thumbs up. We also got a couple other tarpon episodes that you can check out.